Hi, it's Rick from Melissa Bee Farm, and I wanted to do just sort of a bonus uh, video today, uh, real quick, on easy pollinators. Uh, if you do not have the time or the inclination or the space uh, to be a, a beekeeper, but you still want to attract pollinators to your yard, uh, there are some things you really need to think about doing, and uh, wanted to help you out with uh, an example of what I've done. This is a picture I took this morning of a, uh, a little curbside bed in my front yard. My neighbors have been after me forever to do something about this bed. It's unsightly. The umbrals that are falling over um, are not nice to look at. It's looking weedy and, and kind of thin. This is, of course, uh, uh, I said umbrals. This is dill, uh, fennel. A little bit of rosemary in there um, and a chokeberry tree and I've been fighting off uh, both my wife and my neighbors who want to cut it down because it's past its prime but I wanted to show you why you really ought to think about keeping these um, uh, these umbrals around and this is the larva of the monarch butterfly. The monarch butterfly of course is a migratory butterfly and it is a frequent visitor in the uh, Virginia Beach area in late August and September. Uh, most people don't know the butterflies don't actually make the entire trip to Mexico from Canada to Mexico by themselves. Uh, or as an individual they lay uh, successive uh, breedings that make the flight the migration all the way down to Mexico this uh, dill uh, this umbral is just loaded with um, butterfly larvae and I'm letting them have their way this is I, I counted about 35 on this one bush this morning and so I wanted to encourage you to avoid the temptation that many gardeners have of keeping a perfectly clean yard and instead um, try to leave a butterfly habitat for the uh, monarchs as they pass through. They're also very powerful pollinators. And in case you uh, had never seen one, that's the smaller, uh, tiny larval version that grow into the longer one. And this is a tiny side garden that I never got planted this year. Three weeks ago, I planted buckwheat. Uh, bees and pollinators of every sort love buckwheat. It's inexpensive. It grows fast. It's low maintenance. Uh, you can just till it into your soil when you're finished with it. It's non-invasive. Uh, buckwheat um, will uh, die with the first frost and so if you're putting in a fall garden it's a good cover crop to put out and you can just look at this buckwheat is absolutely alive with bees and pollinators. Uh, bees, wasp, uh, I saw some butterflies in there. Uh, certainly something to think about. It's easy, it's cheap, and it's a great way to attract pollinators to your yard to get the things pollinated that you needed uh, taken care of this year. And so that's it for this week. Just a quick and simple little uh, piece on how to attract native pollinators to your yard. Uh, the real secret is not to keep a super tidy yard. Uh, some leftover dill. Uh, I mentioned umbrals. Those are a particular kind of plant. In that family are dill, parsley, carrot, uh, fennel, um, Queen Anne's lace. Uh, the f plants that make these uh, kind of umbrella looking uh, uh, flowers on the top. And it's a great way to um, uh, attract uh, that and buckwheat are a great way to attract pollinators to your yard. Okay, well this is Rick from Melissa Bee Farm. Just wanted to pass on uh, a couple of ideas and uh, we'll talk to you later. Bye-bye. <laughs>